Hi everybody, I'm Arnold Zigarelli of the Azazu Hair Salon in downtown Pittsburgh. And I'm delighted to be with you. My topic today is one that I think is very timely because summer's coming, you mothers, you grandmothers, have these little children sometime, or even on yourself, you'd like to do something a little different, but very easy and perfect for the summertime. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is called a French braid. And it's beautiful and easy to do. And I'm gonna show you on the other side how the technique works. Now remember, why I'm teaching this today is because I want you mothers and grandmothers, cousins, aunts, to be able to do something when you're at the beach or for the summer. Okay, now let me give you a good look at that again. And you'll notice there are two types of braid. This is called a visible braid. And you could do the same technique and not show the braid called the invisible braid. But the technique is very similar. All right, let me show you the difference. I'm going to start off, and you can have your part anywhere, by the way. We're going to take a triangle out of here. I'm going to divide this into three pieces. Doesn't matter how much hair you take, but this is about typical. Now, you notice I have a middle piece, one on the right, one on the left. Now, keep your knuckles pretty close. Now, I'm going to do this slowly for you, and I'll repeat it. All right. The one that's in the middle is the most important because you're going to take either side, and you're going to go under the middle. Then you're going to take that and you create what is called a new middle. But now this piece is in the middle, right? Then we're going to take this piece and we're going to do it under the new middle. So keep in mind, you still have three pieces. I'm going to take the uppermost piece and I'm going to put it under the middle. I now create a new middle. See it? Where my thumbnail is. I borrow from the scalp, pull the hair toward the center. Now, if you have a lot of short ends, you could twist it, but it'll work without the twisting. Take it under the middle. Now, here's the top piece again. Here's my thumbnail. What do I do with this? I put it under the new middle, and now, I have a new middle, there's my thumbnail. Now when I showed Brandy this today, in fact she's the one who did the other side, she really learned it, but she had to do it a few times, so so will you. Now I borrow hair, bring it toward the middle. Here's your uppermost piece, put it to the new, under the new middle. This becomes my new middle. Remember, you're borrowing from the scalp. Pull the hair in the direction you want to go, and it goes under the new middle. Now, I'm going to do just one or two more, then I'm going to do it over again. Once you get the system, you're going to love doing this. All right, there's my technique. All right, let's start over. Lisa, you don't mind, do you? If you're doing Not that. at all. All right. First, we divide it into three sections. You have one here, one in the middle, and you have the third. Now remember, you can start with either side, but you want to put it under the middle. Then you switch, and now you have a new middle piece. See it? You take this under the middle. You're always taking the topmost piece and borrowing from the scalp and always putting it under the new middle. Now, you determine the new middle by your thumbnail. Borrow under the new middle. Remember, you're always switching and having a new middle. And you take the top piece and you borrow from the scalp, 
under the new middle. And you could do this. Now I'll get faster. You can see it becomes sort of rhythmic after a while. And you could do your granddaughters or your daughter or whatever pretty fast once you get on to it. Now Brandy also found that if you get a lot of little short ends that's sticking out, what she likes to do is she twists it before she puts it under the new middle. So you, it's the same thing, except you're controlling the ends better. So, under the new middle, you do it. Control as you do it. Now, you can lift this up, and then people call it, when it's lifted, the rope braid. So, just take one more minute, if I may, Lisa. Is that all right? Okay. Now remember, that's a visible braid. If you want to do an invisible braid, here's the only thing you change. You still take your three pieces. You have left, right, middle. The only difference here is you don't go under, you go over the middle. You go over the middle. By going over, the braid becomes invisible. You don't see it. You get the hidden braid. So it's over the middle. And you'll see what happens here in a minute. Remember, you're going to go over the middle. Now, as you get going on this, and you keep going over, you'll notice that what happens, the braid, you can't see it. And it's real pretty when you go all the way down. So this is a visible braid, invisible, and you start with the three. Now, how much time do you have? We're at seven minutes. That's enough. <laughs> what I'll do for you also is I'm going to show you an angel braid. Really beautiful. But we'll do that next time because I want to do a better job explaining it. And many of you know the name Brandy Lynn. She does all the hair coloring, the finishing. She's a phenomenal hairdresser. And you want to know, who is Brandy Lynn? Let me introduce you to, this is Brandy Lynn. Hi everybody, I'm Brandy Lynn. I just want to add one more thing, a tip for this. The key is to keep your knuckles close to the head. So that, that will help with the braid. Keep your knuckles close when you're twisting. Is there anything else that I covered with you today that helped you the most? I think that was, Keeping your knuckles close was key. And when you have your middle piece, my girl. you want to always have your thumb side on your middle piece so your middle piece don't get lost. You'd be amazed. She, before today, she didn't really know how to do this. She always wanted to learn. I said, well, you came to the right guy at the right day. Thanks, everybody. I really enjoyed showing you this. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Lisa, for always making me look good on camera.